Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys coder.com. We're gonna be integrating this with our existing Hugo websites, uh, but this can really be used for anything, whether whether you're developing a website or a, or any any application really, uh, unless that's you know system dependent, something like a, uh, a native language like C Sharp for Windows or, or Swift for an iOS app. This actually is one of the best things I have seen in a while, and I'm gonna show you guys why. Just stay tuned for the video. All right, guys, Chris State here. We're going to be talking about Coder today, Coder.com. It's a new, uh, fairly new startup, and um, I believe they're based in Texas. And what they have the way they have pitched to you or pitched to the world is that why, uh, why code inside of a downloadable IDE? You know, I use Visual Studio Code. When you could just use an, a browser version, when you could basically code right there in your browser anywhere you're at. And not only that, but you could code on anything. You can code on your phone. You can code on your iPad. You can code on your computer. You can code on a on a friend's or a or a public computer. You go to the library and you can still work on your code. Now, what I'm going to be showing you guys today is we're going to actually integrate this this uh, application with our Hugo based website. You guys can check out that series. I'll link that down below. But I'm going to be hooking it up to that. But we're not limited to that. You can actually hook this up and you can integrate it with any existing application or start a brand new application with this. Coder.com actually gives you a full IDE. It's running on top of Linux. It's running on top of um, Ubuntu Linux version 16.04.5 LTS. It's the, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly here, Xenal Versus or X-E-R-U-S. And, uh, and it actually gives you a, a full, essentially, Docker. And I'll, I'll kind of explain this to you, kind of a container. I'll explain this to you and how that works. And um, the craziest thing about this is it's completely free. So for now, they ha they have a, this is kind of the public alpha. It's free. Anybody can use it. But eventually, they will move on to uh, paid plans where you can get more power or more capabilities out of it. But for now, this is amazing for what we are going to do today. So if you haven't already, click sign up over here. If you've already signed up, just click log in. It's going to automatically log in because I authenticated using my Google account. And you can see right here, we have a couple things. So this is more of your dashboard. You also have a control panel, documentation, and you can redeem something called the fast time code, which we'll get into here in a little bit. Now, I do want to explain out before we create a project, I want to explain the difference between a project and a container. So again, this is running Linux, and a container is kind of your machine. So imagine this is your machine, your virtual machine, and it has, uh, it has a set amount of RAM, a set amount of CPU cores, a set amount of uh, storage space, and your projects sit inside of your container. So you have your container, this is your computer, I just called it main container, and you can see that I've, I've got a total of uh, 2.01 gigabytes remaining, I've used 33%, and it is running. And then you see over here there's a fast time button, and I'll explain that here in a bit and why that's important. But you can see right here, it's, there's a terminal, and I can actually run commands. You know, I can type in like help, and if I can type it right, uh, and it'll actually give you a full little terminal down here that you can use to communicate with that machine. But over here in projects, this is where you can actually uh, create projects on that machine. Now, if you were to uh, if you were to install software that was uh, specifically designed for one of your projects that would conflict with a different project, what you would do eventually when it's enabled is you would actually create a secondary container. That way, you essentially could have two separate environments that have very controlled variables. You know, if one required a certain version of Python or a certain version of Node and you didn't want to have to keep switching back between the two or specifying it, you could create one container with, with the LTS version of Node and one with the uh, you know, the most up-to-date version of Node. So those are uh, those are really powerful. And the greatest thing is that you can actually uh, turn this off and on. You can manage your disk storage and all that. You can control everything within this dashboard. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a new project. And what I want to do is I actually want to integrate this with my blog website. And I'm going to show you guys why this is important and why this is powerful, but we're going to create this. So I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call this uh, Personal Websites. Right, websites. All right, and now that that's done, I'm just gonna click open IDE. And you can see right here, it's coder.com slash chrisstate slash personal websites. And it's gonna initialize up my kind of coding environment. I will tell you that I've noticed that 
uh, I believe I, I I'm not 100% certain, but I believe they're actually using Visual Studio Code as like their kind of layout. It all works the same, and that's why I'm a big fan of it. Is that it all feels and looks the same. Now you can see here, I'm going to go through some of these tabs. You can see there's an explorer where we actually are able to explore files and directories. You can see that this is uh, the path that's leading to us. Uh, over here, you have this search bar, so you can actually search and find things. This has actually been added since the last time I've used this, which is yesterday, which is crazy. Over here, you can invite collaborators, so other people that have coder.com accounts can, in, can actually code with you, and you can actually see real-time what they're typing and their name. Over here... You can actually enable a web server. So if you were to run something like a Express server, that you can run it against these ports, and then you can view those uh, live. So that way, if you're um, accustomed to coding and having it refresh real time, uh, you can actually still use that same type of process. Over here, you do have the terminal. So it will run a terminal with your, and it goes right to that personal website folder. So you're able to run terminal commands and navigate. And then the last thing here is this is this kind of QuickTime, fast lightning bolt looking thing. Now, if you notice down in the bottom right hand corner of this website, you see there's a CPU, a memory, and a disk, disk space used, and then you have a fast time balance. And essentially, any time that this is turned on and it's being used, that balance will go down. Now, why would it be used? This website and this, this uh, environment actually detects when your application will require either more CPU or more memory or more disk usage. Either it's for a continual basis or just for that processing time. Let's say you have a pretty big build and you want to build it. It'll ramp it up, I believe, all the way up to 96 cores. And it'll actually use all of those. And then as it's doing that, it'll eat through your fast time balance. So this fast time is essentially going to optimize your code to run as fast as possible. That way, if you have a couple, you know, you do a bunch of work, you want to run a build, you don't want to wait all day, you can run a build and it'll use some of that fast time. If you don't really care about time, or you know, I, I imagine in the future this is going to be more of a paid option, uh, you can just turn it off, and everything still works the same. You're still not, uh, it, you know, I've, I haven't seen a, a huge uh, decrease in processing. You know, I haven't really seen the benefit of this just because I'm all I'm really doing is using this for my static site generators. So the next thing we're going to get into here is we're actually going to want to uh, copy over our Git repository. But before we do that, we want to actually—I want to actually show you guys how to add uh, libraries. So you can see here, if I go into here, if I run a if I run Node, and I click Enter, now it's running Node, right? So I can print, I can console.log, I can do anything, I can exit right there. Uh, you just type in exit, I think. Uh, maybe Control C. There we go. So you can see I can actually run Node. I can run Python. Here we go. And look, it's now it's running Python 3.7.0. So. You can run all different kinds of things. Now, let's say, let's say you run that and you, Python doesn't work for you. It's like, oh, Python doesn't exist. Well, how do you, how do you add Python to this? Well, you could run an install, but what's really awesome about Coder.com is you can just create a new file, and I can call this test.py, and that would automatically download and install Python in the background faster than you can actually write some code and test it out. So Python's already installed for us. So I'm going to delete that, and that's really honestly how easy it is to install certain things. Now. We'll eventually, I'm going to show you guys how to install Hugo here in a second, but Hugo is not like a, it's not like a, you know, it's not a, an engine or whatever. It's, it's sitting on top of the Go, um, you know, the Go engine. So we're going to actually have to download and install Hugo. I already have it installed, but I'm going to show you guys the entire process on how to do this. So I'm going to clear the console here. I believe you hit control L to clear that. And what we're going to do is we actually need to type in Go and can I make this bigger? Is that possible? Yeah, see, it looks just like Visual Studio Code. Look at that. Super nice. I can make it a little bit smaller. Uh, that looks about good, yeah. So I'm going to type in... Uh, well, look at that. Public alpha. It's okay. All right, so I'm just going to open up a new terminal, make this easier. So I'm going to type in go and then uh, get dot or dash u, and then we're going to type in github.com. If I can type right, github.com slash go hugo dot, uh, or io slash hugo. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to download this repository into the go into the go directory for us. So how to get how do we get there? Where do we go? Well, we go up to the top, and we want to go to 
and I believe it's is it in our it's going to be in one of these. Let me I'll, I'll cut the video and then I'll show you guys real quick. All right. All right. Here we go. Sorry about that. I had to cut it. Uh, okay. All right. So you're going to go into your root folder and then you're going to go to go and then source and then github.com. Scroll down until you see do, 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 Hugo. Go Hugo IO. Inside there is this Hugo and you can see you have all this source code and all you have to do is right click on it and click open in terminal. And then all you do is you say uh, build. Oh, I'm sorry, you type in go build. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna run. And then when you're done, you're gonna scroll down until you see a Hugo file. I'm gonna close out these other terminals. All right, there it is. So you can see that Hugo has been built. And then all you're gonna do to make sure that that can be used anywhere, so essentially, this is an executable or, uh, you know, it's more of a, a binary that, that Linux can use. All you're going to do is you're going to copy that to a folder, which is uh, user local bin. So if I go down here, you can copy that into user local bin. And you can see there, I've copied Hugo in there. And then back in the terminal, you can type in Hugo. and I'm going to type in version. And right there, we have Hugo static site generator. And as of today, we're on version 0.49. Now, you might be, uh, you might have read the documentation on Hugo's website. And it does have a Linux installation guide. I have followed this, I'm sorry, documentation, uh, getting started, install Hugo. You can see that there is a Linux installation if you scroll all the way down here. It's right above the tarball one. Oh, sorry, scroll down here. So you can see that it does have, it can use something called snap. I have still yet to get this to work correctly. Uh, and then if you go down even farther, there you can actually use this thing called sudo app get install Hugo. The problem with this is the people that actually, uh, this Debian package, these people that maintain this package have not updated this since version 0 0.18. So this is gonna give you a very old version, which I tried and it doesn't even build my site. So it's important to actually just go to the GitHub page and install it from the source, uh, which is one of my more popular ways of installing Hugo, just so that way you know you're getting the latest version bugs and all, right? All right, now that we've got that Hugo installed, we, we've tested that it worked. I think we're ready to actually download our, our repository and start working with it. Up here, I'm gonna click on this Home button. It takes us back to our personal websites. And then right here, I'm gonna click on this terminal, open up a new terminal close out the old one. And now we need to actually clone our repository. So I'm gonna type in git clone. And then because our Hugo website has sub modules, I'm gonna type in dash dash recurse dash um, sub modules. And then I'm gonna type in git, uh, or let's type in the full URL. I'm not sure if it'll accept anything else. HTTPS, not HTTPS. slash github.com slash chris state slash blog all right so you can see it created a folder called blog it's downloading everything and if you open it up there it is there's my entire um there's my entire repository and you can see it has a themes folder there's my theme there's my static content my my actual pages and you can look at this you click on configuration and you can see all the configuration if i click on Let's go into uh, let's go into an MD file. You can see there's my markup. So right there, you can see all my markup data. And so they, I know that they are adding. You can see it detects that it's marked down. They are adding um, more colorization, and you can actually, it's, I'll actually show you this real quick. You can go to file and then oh, not settings, custom themes, view custom themes, and you can actually change to different themes. I'm quite a fan of the Visual Studio Code one. Let's see. They have that one. I'm pretty sure they have that one. Let's go to um, 
Let's go to the colorful one or the featured. It'll probably be in the featured. I don't know. Let's just pick a random one. Let's just pick a, a cool one. Um, standards. Adam Dark. I like Adam Dark. We'll do that. And you can see that that's been changed. Uh, but back to back to the tutorial. Um, so we've got our, our Git repository downloaded. But what do we want to do? We actually want to run this website. So how would we do that? Well, we'd open up the terminal, which is already open. And we want to change our directory to that blog. right? And now we should be able to say Hugo server. And you can see that it's built the website. And it says you need to go to HTTP localhost 1313. And it's binding it to 127.0.0.1. So I'm just going to copy this in and I'm going to go to another tab and paste it in. And you can see that right now, it doesn't work, but it's like, well, how does it work? It says it right there. Well, well, the problem with it here is that your web server, this, because we're using a, you know, we're using a third party server and this browser is more of a window into this. It doesn't actually allow you to see this. And so they're saying here, this is where you can run your web server and it's only going to allow you to support ports 80, 3000, 3001, 8000, 80, 80, 9000 and 9080. So luckily, if you go to Hugo's website, so go Hugo, uh, and I'm going to type, or actually I'm going to type in Hugo server onto Google, and then you can see right here, here's the server page. It talks about your variables and things that you can do. And what we want to do is we want to change the port. So I'm going to search for port, and we can actually say we can depend port. That's not what I want. We can live reload port, and look right here. We can change the port right here. So we're going to type in dash P. So we're going to kill the server. And I'm going to type in Hugo server dash P um, 3000. All right. And you can see now it's running on port 3000. You can click on this and you can see, look at that. They're saying go to this URL and you should be able to see it. So if I click, uh, let's just open it in the IDE. I click on it and you can notice nothing loads. And that's a problem because we want to be able to see our website when we're editing it and designing it. So I'm going to go through and just kind of, I, I kind of, um, and I want to give a big shout out. I'm going to throw his name up here on the screen. I want to give a big shout out. Um, let me let me pull up his name real quick because he helped me out a ton on this. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you guys know a little secret. The coder.com actually has a Discord channel that anybody can join and you can get live help right there from anybody. Uh, there's a coder employee. His name is Colin and he actually helped me learn all of this and figuring out how to install Hugo and figuring out how to get the browser up and running. So I want to give a big shout out to him. Thank you, Colin, for all your help. But what we're going to do here is we're actually going to click on open in browser. So I'm sorry, not open in browser. Uh, we will actually want to set up some settings so that way we can see that. So I'm going to go through and kind of walk you guys through what settings we need to enable and how we're going to make it a lot easier in the future to use those settings. So I'm going to kill the, I'm going to kill the server. I'm going to clear it out. And what the, what the settings are is you need Hugo server. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change that port to 3000. And then after that, we're going to bind. I only need three dashes. I only need two. We're going to bind our IP address to 0 .0 0 .0 0 0.0.0.0. And then what that's going to do is it's actually going to say, it's actually going to point to uh, this, this website. And um, I'm not entirely sure why this is working in the entire way, but essentially you're binding your server to that instead of a local host, which I believe this is what they have chosen for their IP. And then what we're going to do is we're going to type in um, dash B, and I'll show you guys what that means. So dash B up here is a base URL. So we need to make sure that when it builds this website on the server that your base URL is that custom, that custom URL that popped up in here and not your actual website. So I'm going to say HTTPS, oh, let me click on it, HTTPS slash slash, and mine was 3000 dream flammable gnu.cdr.co. And then we're going to do dash dash append port equals false. And if I did that right, it build. And if I go into here and I click open in browser, you can see right here, look at that. It built my website live on the fly. You can click on open an IDE. It'll show you this in here too. And that way now you can actually edit on the fly and view your code. But look how crazy that is. Look how, look how I didn't, you know, I didn't pay for anything. I don't have anything running on my machine. Everything is running completely in here. And we're able to code just like we would in Visual Studio Code and run a server and put it right here. But I think there's something even more important where we can take this one step further because it's, I don't know about you, but it would be kind of annoying to have to type all that in every single time. So what we're going to do 
is we're actually gonna create a new file. So right here inside the blog folder, I'm gonna create a new file. Oop. Create a, a new file, there we go, and I'm gonna call this package.json. Now why are, we, why are we choosing that? Well, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use node, a little node command, npm, to run a script. And so I'm not gonna do anything fancy in here, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna create something called scripts, and I'm gonna create another object, and in here I'm gonna call it coder. And we're just gonna basically create that same command. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in that same command. So we're gonna say right here, hugo server dash dash bind equals zero. Ooh. And this time we have to use single quotes because we're using double quotes on the outside. So 0 0.0.0.0 0. Uh, dash P to put it on port 3000. You guys can choose any port you want there. I just chose 3000 for what I wanted. You're gonna type, type in dash B and you're gonna use that URL, HTTPS slash slash 3000 dash dream flammable gnu.cdr dot co dash dash append port equals false quote end quote all right so you can see i've got all that done i want to go ahead and go to the terminal and test this out so i'm going to go ahead and save that file you can see i have everything here i'm going to click on the terminal here and I'm gonna go ahead and type in, oh, the terminal's not working. Let me go ahead and refresh this real quick. It is a alpha program, so please bear in mind that this is not a full, fully fleshed out piece of software. It does have a little bit of bugs and kinks in it. And they have actually placed in the bottom left hand of your dashboard or terminal or wherever you're at, a little bug icon. You can click on that and suggest what's go, you know, what kind of settings and, and changes that you wanna uh, add and right there you can join that discord so you can get some help and feedback a little bit faster So I'm going to click on this terminal button and right here. We're going to we're going to make sure we're inside the blog So we're going to change directory to the blog and then I'm going to type in npm Which is your node package manager and we're going to type in run and then we're going to type in Coder now if you remember back in our package.json. I want to drag this down here And our package.json one of the scripts we called is coder so what npm is looking for is a file named package.json. It's gonna run a script named coder. And so when I click enter, it should see it and boom, look, it built that. And look how fast that was. I didn't actually have to type in all this line. I didn't have to memorize this. All I do is just type in npm run coder and I get my website up and running. I'll go ahead and open it up in the IDE so you can guys see it running. Ah, yes, we're getting an error here with the, um, oh yeah. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. I see why that's happening. Um, let's go ahead and fix that real quick. And that's because I have a space right here. So I'm going to save that. We're going to kill this uh, server. Control C, and we're going to do it again. So let's let's refresh this browser. There we go. So you can see a quick debug to fix up a, a slight issue, and now we can actually look at our website all in its beautiful glory, right? So I'm gonna close out of this. And I think the last thing we need to do is make sure that this file gets added to our GitHub repository. So what I'm gonna do here is go down to this, this terminal. I'm gonna kill the, the server that's running and I'm gonna go ahead and clear it out so we can start fresh. And I'm gonna type in right here, git, uh, git uh, let's just do git status so we can see what happened here. And it's saying here that we have two files that have changes. Now we don't need, we don't need to actually sync the lock uh, we just need to sync the package. So I'm going to type in git add, and we're going to type in package.json. This is essentially, typically I like using GUI interfaces. I like using things like um, like Git Kraken or GitHub Desktop because it makes it really easy. But this is how you interface with Git if you're just going to use the terminal. So now that I've added that, I'm going to commit it to the database. So I'm going to say git commit. Now I like to do all my, I, typically when you just type in git commit, what it does is it opens up your uh, default editor, which in here would be Vim or uh, VI. And I don't like I don't like those. Those just they just aren't my preference at all. I think they're terrible. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in dash M and just put our message in here. I'm gonna say add added package for coder.com in package.json. And that's gonna go ahead and commit that to the repository with that message for me. And then obviously the last thing we need to do is we need to push that to the uh, github.com. So I'm gonna type in my username here. I'm gonna type in my password. All right, sorry guys, I typed that in wrong. I'm gonna try it one more time. 
git push. There we go. All right, so you can see I typed in my password and it went ahead and it went ahead and put that in my repository. We're gonna go ahead and go to github.com slash Chris state slash blog. That way we can actually see that it's actually there. So packets.json and look at that, there's our code. So now every time that we wanna run this server in here, we can go ahead and do that. Now, why why is this so powerful? Why is this so amazing? One of the biggest One of the biggest things in this is that you no longer need to set up your development environment if you ever need to code on the go or code wherever. See, right off the bat, whenever I get a new computer, whether it be a new laptop or a desktop, I have to set up things like, you know, I have to install Node, I have to install uh, Go, I have to install Hugo, I have to download my themes or my, you know, my editor, download my themes, set up my extensions, get all of that in line, and then I can start coding. But if I'm on the go and like, let's say I have like, oh, I'm at a friend's house, but I forgot my laptop or I don't have my charger or it died or whatever, I can just get on his computer and log in here on the browser and I can edit my website live. And this is really, really powerful because sometimes you are in a situation where you're not necessarily meaning to, to be able to have access to your server, but something happens where you actually need to get in there and fix it. So this gives you that power. And even more importantly, it gives me that power to do it on my iPad. Now, as much as I love my MacBook Pro, it is much more bulkier than my iPad and it's a lot more weight to carry around as far as just, it's, it's literally much heavier. And so... Being able to just bring my iPad with me to do my programming and photo editing on and video editing, I'm able to do all that on one device that's light, fast, and very easy to use. And that's what I really love about Coder.com. Uh, I, I, I don't really have too much more here to show you in here. Uh, what we kind of did there is just kind of set it up to where you guys can actually get in here and, and uh, edit this and add it. Uh, you guys can uh, go ahead and ask some questions down below to actually see if there's anything that you need help installing and stuff like that. Now, I know that a lot of you guys are probably going to have problems with this, whether it's it's just an alpha stage, you might have a bug, or maybe I didn't explain something out. So if any of you guys have issues trying to get to this point and getting your website set up, just go ahead and put a comment down below or message me over Instagram or Facebook or something, and I'll get right back with you and try to help you guys figure that out. If you guys liked this video and liked everything you learned, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment with what you learned and how you're going to be using it. Go ahead and show me your guys' websites that you're building. And I want to see I want to see what you guys have built using my tutorials and my my uh, my wisdom that I, or you know knowledge that I've kind of passed off on to you. That'd be great. Again, if you like the if you like the video, throw that thumbs up on it. Check me out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Chris State. Uh, again, with these with all these videos, I do post a uh, I do post it on my blog. For this one, I'm going to be writing up more of a documentation for it with these commands. Uh, you know, quote unquote, prettified, so you guys can go there and copy them and paste them right in there so you don't have to type everything out. If, uh, again, if you like the video, go ahead and throw a thumbs up, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks. Yeah.